Well, Daytona 500 is this weekend, and right now we bring in former Sprint Cup champion Kyle Busch. Kyle, thank you for joining us. No problem. Thank you. We appreciate your time. So you have had a top 10 finishes in the past in the Daytona 500. What have you learned from them, and how will you apply that to Sunday to try and grab that checkered flag? <laughs> Well, each and every year is different. You know, we come down here with different cars or different engine packages or different rules packages from NASCAR. So uh, you've kind of got to get accustomed to those and learn those pretty quick throughout the week in order to get ready for the big race on Sunday. But uh, all things have gone well so far. We've had fast Toyota Camrys, and uh, our M&M's Camry looks really good. It's really strong. We've got the new 2018 look of the Toyota Camry with us this year. So we're excited about that and being able to carry that to the front of the field on Sunday. And I think it's going to be a great race. It's going to be a fun race, exciting race for the fans. The pack of the cars seem to be closer together this year, so there's more mixing and matching of, of guys uh, going for position all day long. So it's going to be a, a hard-fought battle for sure. You know, Kyle, the last time I talked with you was right after you had this improbable win to a, in a Sprint Cup championship. And, you know, you've achieved so much in the sport of racing. So I'm going to give you a scale from absolutely obsessed to giving zero Fs. How would you describe your feelings about Daytona? <laughs> um, you know, obviously you got to give it everything you got. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm on that spectrum of it. And it's obviously a, a fun race. It's a challenging race. It's our biggest race of the season with the Daytona 500. So um, coming out here to Daytona, though, it's, um, it's always a little nerve wracking because I've known what's happened to me here over the years. But also on the other hand of that, I forget about all of that. And I just go after the victory and try to race for the win. You know, I've never won a Daytona 500. So that's next on my bullet list that I want to achieve. And hopefully we can uh, accomplish that here this year. All right, you touched on it briefly. Let's dive a little deeper into it. NASCAR has implemented a few rule changes this year, including Whoa, a... who is that? Whoa, is that, that's you. That's big Can head, I have Kyle. one of those? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait, Kyle, is that a compliment or is that an insult, big head Kyle? <laughs> it depends. I think it's well, a compliment. Yeah, I think it's a really good thing. <laughs> we'll have to go on Monday morning to see how big your head truly is. But yeah, all right. I wanted to ask about That's right, that's right. About the rule changes, uh, including a new segmented race format, how are drivers reacting internally to these changes? Uh, I think everyone from my standpoint that I've seen is, is reacting pretty well to it. You know, I think it just kind of lends itself to more opportunities for more action throughout the, the races, throughout the race weekends. Um, you know, with these new segments that are coming on board for the NASCAR seasons, you have opportunities to make points right there uh, all throughout the race, which obviously then, too, will carry you through the postseason into the final race of the season at Homestead. So uh, beforehand in the, in the postseason races, uh, the, the points would be reset. Everybody would be back to zero after every third race. Well, now you actually get to attribute the points that you've earned in the regular season to your point total throughout the chase, and that helps you be successful getting to Homestead and having your whole season mean something instead of just what you do in those three races. You know, Kyle, you alluded to, alluded to it before, just what you've been through in terms of crashes, in terms of very scary moments. You know, grab headlines earlier this week when Danica Patrick admitted that she's had a dozen concussions. We know Dale Jr. missed half of the season last year because of concussions. You know, we talk a lot about the link between football and head trauma, but should we be talking about drivers and are more of them worried about being diagnosed with CTE or something worse down the road? Yeah, I mean, that's a good possibility for sure. And, and NASCAR's implementation of a new rule that we all have to go to the infield care center after we've had heavy contact, whether or not we can drive our car back to the garage area or not. Uh, it's just sort of an emphasis on safety and trying to uh, protect the human health, the driver health, and being able to make sure that we're all safe and we're doing the things that we need to be doing correctly. So uh, I've never been diagnosed with a concussion, so I can't say that I have or haven't had one. But uh, certainly our sport has gotten safer over the years, and we continue to evolve and make the right changes in order to try to help not only uh, our safety, but of course the safety of others that are around us on the track. Kyle, we appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Stay safe at Daytona, please, and good luck on Sunday. You got it. Thank you guys. Have fun.